All right, dudes, welcome back. It's Jake Gordon. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. We're going to dive into something that I used to get asked about a lot, um, and I still see it's been an issue in the community with people trying to scale with shopping ads. We're going to talk about literally the Google Merchant account suspension, why it happens, which is the most important part, and how can we fix it. Now, if you have ever had a merchant suspension, I've had plenty, um, and it's good that I've had plenty because I've had to go and fix them, um, and that's really how I know how to keep stores alive for as long as possible especially with the merchant account. Now, what we will do as well, we'll obviously make another video on Google Ads account as well, like suspicious payments and all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, let's break down in both videos first. So the first one's going to be on merchant center suspension. So typically it is misrepresentation. Now, if you get anything else outside of misrepresentation, you've probably done something <laughs> illegal in Google's ads because the most common one, 99% of the times that people always, you know, comment on these YouTube videos or, you know, in my you know inbox and Facebook is misrepresentation. Now, what actually is misrepresentation? It pretty much just means Google just do not believe who you are saying to be. Now, you could do everything right and you could still get it wrong with just some certain stuff on the website. Now, you know, the Merchant Center is ideally for shopping ads. So my most 99, I wouldn't say 99, but maybe 80 to 85% of my sales at the beginning definitely come from Google Shopping ads. So if you have to go and just do search ads, you're at a huge disadvantage to, to somebody like me because I've scaled most stores um, and a lot of stores just with shopping ads. I add search ads at the end. So, you know, if you can't get a merchant center approved, you're never going to run shopping ads. So let's break down why it happens and what you can kind of do um, to get around it. So I've got here a couple of quick notes because it's a big one. It's obviously a big topic. So it's a huge issue. You know, if you can't get around it, and it means that you can't even start your e-commerce journey, right? So you could you could get total hyped up about you know even watching these videos, seeing you know the 100k challenge that we did, the 10k profit challenge that we smashed, and you're like, okay, let's go, let's this could my my ticket out, you know, to financial freedom, and you go and <laughs> you get you go and set it up, and you get you get banned, suspended immediately, and you're like, oh shit, what did I do wrong? Now that's completely normal if you're brand new, because you don't know what you're doing. Like you have to comply with you know Google. You know Google's um, shopping ads. So, like I said, it's been popping up quite a bit. Everybody's blaming Google, but tr I promise you, it's your fault because all the people that are actually scaling successfully, they never get banned with a merchant center suspension anymore because they know exactly what they're doing wrong and it'll fix it. So, you must have all the correct steps on this site, but on your website. So, if you're using Shopify, which I'm just going to presume most of you guys are, we're going to talk about what exactly you need step by step um, to get these shopping ads running. So. I've got a quick example here of a store in the UK that I compete with quite a lot in my general stores. Um, they've just been running the same store for three, four years now. Really, really consistent. They used to have like a crappier version. I think they've swapped over to WooCommerce um, um, or it looks like it's designed by Shopwired, whatever that is. So I know they used to use Shopify and pay a, a lot, but they've been running for so, so long and these guys have never, ever had an issue. So. Ideally, what I'm looking at when I'm looking at a store is the most important thing is your policy pages, right? So we can see here, these guys have got a bunch of policy pages. Now, we're going to cover them, you know, directly right now. So the contact us page. Now, Google says you need 303. Now, if you're getting suspended, I recommend doing the 303, right? Because if you can't get approved 203 for the forms that I'll talk about in a second, just do 303. So what do I mean by that? You need your, you need your phone number on or you need a phone number ideally you want to get a business number but i've scaled stores way 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 um six figures just with my mobile number just with my girlfriend's no mobile number just with my mom and dad's mobile numbers but you need to have some sort of phone number on the website right they need to be able to contact you the customer if google don't see a phone number it looks like you're trying to scam people right and obviously that gets annoying um, if you're actually picking up calls all day once you're starting to scale because that would just happen. So what I usually do is once we're at scale is I turn that phone off and just have an automatic answer machine. So for example, PR Global, um, they might have something like, you know, hey, you've reached PR Global, um, please contact us on prglobal at gmail.com. So they might push them to the email so they don't actually have to have people answering their phone but they have a phone number there so Google can see that, but it's pushing them over to the email, right? Because there's nothing worse than picking up phone calls all day when you're trying to scale a store. So number one, get a phone number on there. Um, and ideally make it real, do not fake phone numbers. I've done that, I've been successful with that, but just do what I just said, just put, put your own phone number or get, an, get another crappy little phone, turn it off, have a pre-recorded message on there and just never touch it, right? Because ideally you just want all the support emails just to go to the support on the emails. You don't want anybody answering the phone, unless you're a big, huge brand and you want to do that and maybe upsell people on the phone, but 
you know, if you're doing a dropship and you're really not trying to speak to customers, I promise you. So another thing is obviously you need an email address. Now, get an email address. It's pretty self-explanatory. I still use Gmail accounts and I'm still fine. But if you're struggling and you keep getting banned, get a proper, you know, domain. So for example, uh, PR Global at, you know, um, support at peerglobal.com, right? It's not a Gmail, but if you're struggling with a Gmail, get support with like 10 bucks, set it up, finished. Another thing is you're going to need an address. Now, I never use an address, but like I said, for me, I've been fine with two or three. So I've got the phone number and I've got the email. I'm fine with that. If you're getting suspended, you're going to need the three or three. So phone number, email, and an address. Now, I wouldn't recommend putting your home address, especially if you're maybe in India and like you have like a home in, I don't know, just like a third world country. It's probably not going to look great because they will check it. So there's two things you can do is you can fake it, which... I've done successfully, like I said, I never really have to put the address, but sometimes I have had to. I've faked an address. Um, or buy a PO box. I don't know how expensive they are, or rent a, like a quick space in an office. Maybe you can rent an online virtual office for 200 bucks. I'm sure there's services like that a month. Um, like I said, if you're getting suspended, you're gonna to have to go down that route. If you've had a clean slate, you can get away without using the address. But if you keep getting suspended, you're gonna to have to do that one. So it's not expensive. Um, like I said, you can always try and fake the address, but if you've tried that and you got suspended, you're probably gonna to have to pay, you know, whatever it is, 200 bucks a month for a virtual PO box. I'm sure you can do that online. I've definitely heard people doing that. So that's the first one. That, that seems quite a lot, and that's just on the Contact Us page, right? So um, let's see what these guys have got. I'm sure they've got, you know, they've got the email, um, they've got like a chat box here. Now, it's really interesting. These guys don't even have a phone number. So technically, technically they've only got one form of contact ID, but they're scaling these stores. So these guys have got away with it. I definitely would not recommend just having one contact ID because you're for sure going to get suspended. Now, maybe if these guys put the email address and a phone number up first, and once they got approved, then they took down the phone number. But still, the phone number is so easy to do. Get a, fit, get a real phone, turn it off, and just put it to a voicemail. It's so easy. Pre-record the message. Um, yeah, so that's what you need to do that one. You need an FAQ page, right? So get that done. You need a refund policy and it has to be a legit refund policy. It's not one of these ones where it's like, you know, there's no refunds, right? So don't do that. In terms of service, you can Google these and Shopify give you some premium, premium ones as well, but I always recommend pre-handwritten your own ones. So we'll talk about what you can do that in a second. Privacy policy, so all these boring jargon pages that you need. Delivery information as well. And another one that actually, you know, reached out to a rep of mine, you need to actually put how, you know, um, a payment is accepted, right? For example, if I if I make a web if I make a web a st if I make a purchase on your website, how does you know how does it happen, right? So what what major cards do you accept? We accept Visa, Mastercard, credit cards, and PayPal. So you just need a little sec. You don't always need it, but for me, I always have. An accepted payment um, type so just have like that and just put like we accept this the customer is charged at checkout um, it's just something simple like that super simple and um, some themes do build in um, what can I see this one here on the PR global we can have the PayPal these ones are okay but it's not gonna hurt just to put another um, you know policy page in here super easy to do now um, another thing as well you don't want any spam spammy countdown timers <laughs> It doesn't make your sales better, I promise you guys. It looks terrible. It actually probably hurts your conversion rate. So delete that. Fake urgency, fake countdown timers, delete it. Overuse of fake sales, huge fake discounts. Now, I still put a lot of my items on sales, sometimes even as much as 50%, and it definitely helps. But nowadays, I don't have everything on sale. I ran a store, a general store, my very first successful general store back in, I think it was 2017, um, maybe it was 18, three, four years ago when I was really starting to you know, work out how to do Google Ads. Everything was on discount and it was fine, right? But obviously Google are getting more strict. So nowadays we're just having maybe 20, 30% or maybe your top sellers, put them on a big discount if you want, but don't have everything on discount because I promise you Google will check this, right? Especially if you get suspended and you do a manual review, a real person is gonna come through the site, okay? And if they see everything's on sale, you don't really look legit and that's why you're having misrepresentation issues, okay? Clunky landing pages, what I mean by that is like when you click on a site and have you ever seen a site that's just, it doesn't load, it just doesn't look good, it's just spammy. Fix that, put a good theme on, um, simple. You need to buy it now button and you need to with a work and checkout. So if you don't have a payment merchant connected, for example, Shopify Pay, Stripe, um, just PayPal by itself, it won't cut it. Um, so you need a Shopify Pay if you have to go third party, authorized.net, SagePay, um, WorldPay, 
if you're going third party, if you've been banned from Shopify, um, hopefully you haven't, but put Shopify Pay, just connect it to your bank and make sure that works because what happens is the bot or the manual rep will go through the go through to a product and it'll go to checkout and if you don't have anything connected, it's just going to not work and you're going to get suspended because a customer can't check out. So um, I've got here is if you're really struggling, literally go on shopping ads and look at stores already running ads um, to make a hybrid version of your page. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So if you want to find out like the terms of service and the page and that, it's so simple. Go on Google, type in a product, let's do a GPS tracker. Um, let's find a couple of ads on shopping. Because remember, these guys are approved um, for shopping ads. It's that simple, right? So let's open up a couple. Now you can do any product. Like I said, you can. There's so many product ideas you can do, right? All we're trying to do is go to these guys because these guys are obviously running ads. These are paid ads, right? These guys are approved for the merchant account, right? So if you're struggling, come down and look at their policy pages, right? So if you want a terms of sale page, grab this thing. Obviously, make a hybrid version. Do not copy and paste this thing because obviously, you know, it's going to have these these guys' details in it, and obviously, you need to make it to your store. So, for example, email addresses. Put that on your store, and you've automatically guaranteed to have successful terms of service pages um, and all that kind of stuff. You can see here as well. So, if I want a contact us page, what do these guys have? They just have a form. That's great. That doesn't really prove my point. Um, you can see here though, they've got the address in here. Uh, yeah. So they've got the email here and they've got an address. So these guys have got the two or three contact us pages, but they haven't got the phone number. So like I said, two or three is mostly fine. Like I said, I would still recommend having a phone number because you can easily, easily, easily have that on an answer machine to go to that rather than getting a legit address. Now, I don't know if this is legit. I really doubt it is. Um, but like I said, for me, I'd never, never need an address, but you guys might need to get that. So and um, let's have a look what these guys have for the contact us page you can see here they've, they've got the building address here they've got a phone number here so these guys have already got everything it looks like and they've got an email address and um, so you don't always need to have it on the contact us page you can just have it on the footer still i always recommend having a contact us page and um, just to keep it clean so do all that now this is just for the store side by the way so this is not the merchant um center this is going to help you get approved but this is all on the shopify side right so the merchant side so first of all you need to have the delivery information must match your website so when you're filling in all the stages on the merchant hopefully you know what i'm talking about if you don't and um, this is probably not the video for you because i'm not going to dive into that right now um you know this is just if you know what you're doing and you've been suspended before so if you're constantly open up new accounts from the same wi-fi same details without fixing previous accounts so if you've had misrepresentation and you've not went back and fixed it and you just try and open it again you're going to be flagged you end up going to get blacklisted and you're just going to be done with your name forever if you don't fix that so do not do that it's just a nightmare so many people have had to you know use other people's names i'll talk about one of my situations in a second as well so either fix the suspended accounts Use a friend, family or friends' details. You know, get it right and don't keep blacklisting your details. As simple as that. Because if you if you keep getting suspended, I had to do in my comments. He said he opened up he opened up seven stores in like a day and just got suspended back to back to back. He's a hundred percent blacklisted because he's not followed these steps. Don't don't be that guy because he's never going to be able to run shopping ads in his name. Now, if you've got a girlfriend or mum or dad or friend, that's fine to do it absolutely fine to go and use their name once you realize what you did but ideally you want to run everything off your name because you know it just keeps it so much easier and um, just it's just so much easier trust me so this also you know happens with you know ad accounts with the suspicious payments so once you get the merchant side you got to get the ad account as well now like i said we'll make this in another video i don't want to talk about ad accounts right now this is just for misrepresentation so we'll touch up on that in another video so if you've had accounts you know on adwords side and not fix them and you, like i said if you try and open up accounts again you're going to get blacklisted i promise you if you don't fix it and um, i don't know how many chances you get some people say two or three but i think it's i think it's one to be honest like if you don't fix that and you just try and open it again they're going to catch up to you eventually it might not be immediate but you will get suspended and um, even if you do everything right without fixing that first account so for for another thing that we can talk about real quick that i want to touch upon um so this is this is when you want to be filling it in. So the best app I recommend, um, I'll just show you what that looks like. It's a feed for Google Shopping. Um, app. 
da, 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 da. so yeah so that so once you go on shopify if you're not using shopify i don't know what one you would use but it's just this if you're using shopify this is the best one so feed for google shop map in the app and this you know this connects everything to the merchant like i said i'm not going to go over how to do that there because you know those videos are boring to make you should already know how to do that i'm sure there's many tutorials this is just to fix your accounts or just to know why you're getting suspended so this is the one i use and um, it's just everything's automatic you don't have to manually add your products so just a quick side note there and um, just use that one so for me i'll give you a story about me real quick like one of my other stores i had before um i've went as far as buying new laptops um going to a friend's um work address so we were we were running a store before where i was going to my friend graham's you know work address because this this house here that i'm in right now and this laptop i, I like to just keep that separate right so we bought a new laptop in my friend's name and we were just hot spawn off his phone because i had like the fear of if i bring that laptop and this can happen if i bring that laptop here connected to this wi-fi there was a there was a chance um that this store on this laptop that i'm using right now and that store would go down if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense so like i'm saying if you're suspend your name by just being you know i don't want to say the word stupid but a little bit silly by just you know making new accounts when you don't know what you're doing you're going to have to go down that route now that is a pain in the arse let's be honest because i was going to his house every three four days at night time to his work hotspot and just to manage ads um so it was just it was like a 30 40 minute drive right um in traffic so but i cared a lot about the store and i wanted to scale it up so you're going to have to do that if you if you just suspend your own account and um, obviously there's other ways where you can maybe get a new router i'm sure that would work as well but you're definitely going to need a new laptop and um, in fact i'm working with one of my clients at the moment who's been a merchant suspended before and he had to go and get a new laptop um and it's it's, it's okay so far he's using his mum's details so so far so good touch wood but ideally that's not ideal at the end of the day like obviously if it's your mum or your dad fair enough but if you get suspended in their names going to have to go to friends you're going to have to go to like family uh, other family members right and it's just not ideal so follow this step um take your time the most important part for me is your policy pages making sure your site actually looks well don't use crappy themes like if you really want to be safe invest in a good theme they're not expensive um but you can still get away with using free themes like debut i'm sure and um, i never use them but just make sure the merchant side is good as well so everything matches um make sure that you're not like i said the most important thing is don't open up new accounts because you're going to get your you're going to get your name blacklisted and it's just not going to end well and you're going to be crying to google saying it's their fault when i promise you it's your fault so i hope this you know helped you guys i hope this actually because there's nothing worse than seeing somebody get hyped up about running you know google ads um trying to honestly change your life and then get suspended because they just don't know what they're doing so um i really hope this helped you i know google are being tough on some people but like i said i promise you it's you guys' fault unfortunately because you need to take the time to go and read this they've got a bunch of policy pages on their site where you can go and read it but honestly you'll you'll drive yourself insane because there's so much crap this is really all you need um if there's anything else i can think of i will come back and add to this video and make a new one but really this is all i've ever ever ran like i said if you're if you're getting suspended you need to go to that extra level of adding three or three contact us pages getting a proper gmail um making sure that these match your shipping times so don't have two three four weeks delivery like i said if you watched my previous video you should know how to get two to five days shipping guaranteed right so you should never have aliexpress times again that's another issue if they see that you've got a four week delivery they're not going to like that you're drop shipping from china it's pretty obvious to tell um so don't do that so hope this made sense guys um i'll see you in the next one